Mr. Chair, colleagues, a number of residents in Newport Beach opposed the building of a condominium high-rise tower that was approved by its city council as it followed city code provisions. In order to gather the necessary signatures to qualify a ballot measure, the opponents were required to attach a copy of the environmental impact report, some 1,000 pages, to each petition document. This was very clever, but it was also very expensive. Although I may not have necessarily agreed with the opposition of adding new housing, I also do not agree with obstructionist tactics to disincentivize citizens from participating in local government. A summary of the EIR should have been more than adequate. SB 359 tries to find the compromise between an onerous document and no project details at all. I'm asking that attaching specified declarations to referendum petitions be a responsible imposition and not a cumbersome obstacle to exercise to the exercise of participating in government. I respectfully request an I vote and I have a key witness. Thank you, Senator Mark. Dr. Skinner. Yes, your, your witness. So good morning. My name is Susan Skinner and I'm here to ask you to use your legislative superpowers to right a serious wrong. <laughs> Specifically, I'm asking you to support Senator Morlock's SB 359, which will prevent future abuses of the referendum process. In November 2016, the Newport Beach City Council approved a 25-story condominium tower. Knowing that my group was going to run a referendum to overturn their decisions, they added 3,700 unnecessary pages to the text of the ordinance, including the entire EI and the land use element of the general plan. They did this because the courts have held that any documents added to an ordinance must be included in the referendum petition that challenges it. Because of their action, we ended up with this petition. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. I've been doing this a lot. <laughs> this is one petition. It has room for 100 signatures. We needed 8,000 in order to qualify the referendum. Because of their action, um, each petition cost $100 to print and used 10 pounds of paper. It collectively cost $46,000 to print these petitions. Proponents have 30 days to gather the necessary signatures, and the printing of these petitions required nine days. The Newport Beach City Council knew exactly what they were doing because one of the councilmen made an impassioned plea to his colleagues not to make the referendum look like a phone book. Although we were ultimately successful in obtaining the signatures needed, the barriers placed by our City Council cannot be understated. In a less well-organized group, the loss of nine days to print the petitions would have been fatal. In a less affluent city, the $46,000 cost of the petitions would have shut down the effort immediately. The fact that we were able to successfully complete the referendum does not dimish, diminish the malfeasance shown by the council. The fact that they could use their legislative powers to block our constitutional rights with impunity requires, in my opinion, substantial changes to the law. I made a complaint to the grand jury and the district attorney's office, both of whom opened an investigation and both of whom concluded that it was not a crime for the city council to have taken this action. Thus, the only avenue open to prevent future abuses is the legislative path. Democracy works best when democratic processes are respected. The right to petition one's government is among the most precious rights that we have. Please support this bill to protect the democratic balance of power in future referendums. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Skinner. Um, you've obviously been hanging around Senator Morlock too much because the rest of us do not have super superhuman powers. So <laughs> I know you do. Right. Um, well, other witnesses in support? Uh, opposition? Uh, all right. Um, bring it back to committee questions. No questions? No questions? Here's a, a couple issues. Um, one that I'd like to work with you on, Senator Morlock, is it's uh, maybe it's protecting a brother or sister in the bar, is the seven-day turnaround is, is very, very quick. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd like to work with you on perhaps extending that seven-day period or defining it as business days or something. That's a, that's a very short period of time. Uh, and it's, it could be quite a bit of work to be able to put that together. And there'll be lots of input, I am sure, um, as we've experienced with the Attorney General. So are you, are you amenable to, to working on that time period? I'll respect your superpowers. Right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, and, and also, and just some issues with, with the, the, the timing, um, the seven days, the, the 30 days, that kind of thing. I want to make sure that, that we have 
provided sufficient time to be able to, to do an adequate analysis and summary so we don't have to have legal fights over whether the phone book would have been more appropriate. So uh, assuming you're, you're amenable to, to work with us on, on those issues, then, then I'm going to support the bill. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm amenable, and right. uh, I'll work with uh, Dr. Skinner as well, make sure right. that she's right. happy. We're talking about good form. Right. That's all we're trying right. to, to do. All right. Well, thank you. Is there a motion? I will move so. Senator Nielsen moves. Uh, all right. Thank you, sir. Uh, would you like to close? I think I just did. I All respectfully right. ask and I vote. All right. Madam Secretary, if you'd call the roll. Motion is due passed to Senate Appropriations Committee. Umberg? Aye. Umberg, aye. Nielsen? Aye. Nielsen, aye. Hertzberg? Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Stern? The, the bill's out. Thanks.